Good day, viewers, and welcome back to yet another edition of Tourismus Namibia. I am, of course, Precious Ntunapo, your presenter for today, where we will be discussing topics, destinations, and to the point. But for now, let's head straight to topics. <laughs> Well, under topics today, we discuss the Fish River Canyon following a May report on Facebook, which claimed that the Fish River Canyon has limited water points. Namibia Wildlife Resorts NWR spokesperson Nelson Ashipala said that the popular walking trail is safe to walk with enough water points for hikers. Ashipala said that he doubts that NWR will put anyone at risk in relation to the water points. He encouraged hikers to use biodegradable soap to keep the water sources clean, adding that there was no reason to worry about sharing water points with wildlife as there were water points set up specifically for hikers. He further said that hikers should also look out for beer at some water points for their pleasure and relaxation. Meanwhile, the total number of walkers for the year so far cannot be confirmed as there have been a number of cancellations and last-minute bookings. Our next topic, of course, we discuss the World Environment Day. The prevalence of plastic in the Namibia environment is a considerable threat to human and environmental health. While the plastic bags and waste generated from plastic materials continues to create a devastating waste management, stress among local authorities, especially towns, small towns in Namibia. The Environmental Fund of Namibia, EIF, said this as it commemorated World Environment Day on Monday, which focused on solutions to plastic pollution under the campaign Beat Plastic Pollution. Beat Plastic Pollution calls for global solutions to combat plastic pollution. World Environment Day is a global platform for inspiring positive change and an Environmental Awareness Day on environment and specific environmental issues held on the 5th of June every year. The EIF said that plastic bags are one of the most unsightly forms of waste in Namibia and are highly visible on the outskirts of all Namibian towns and cities, in formal settlements as well, and in Namibia's marine environment. Under our next topic, we discuss Recon Africa and their inclusion in the gas and oil exploration. Having managed to feature negatively in the World Heritage Report in 2022, Recon Africa's gas and oil exploration in Namibia's Kavango regions and the Okavango River Delta in Botswana remains a focus point this year. The World Heritage Report 2023 this year focused on damage to world heritage caused in Turkey and Syria by the severe earthquakes last February. However, Recon Africa's gas and oil exploration in the Kavango region also made pages 166 to 169 as part of the environmental threats to the Okavango Delta and Sodilo Hills World Heritage Site. Well, that does bring us to the end of topics, but up next we look at destination and we see where it was headed. Welcome back. It's of course time for destinations and up first in destinations we have a look at the Olive Exclusive. The Olive Exclusive is an intimate boutique hotel situated in Vintuk's Eros suburb. It is the first ultra-luxurious sanctuary of its kind in the Namibian capital. It is cool, contemporary and stylish but with a warm heart and authentic African soul. 
Its sleek modern lines are complemented by organic textures, natural furnishings, an eco-friendly approach and dedicated personal service. Take a tour around this beautiful facility in this video with NTV's Michael Kayunde. So let's have a look at that video. Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Christmas Namibia. Today we are finding ourselves at Oli Exclusive Hotel. My name is Michael Kayunde and I'm going to take you through a tour of one of their junior Follow me. Um, this is one of uh, their junior rooms, uh, very big as well. It has everything from the mirror to the sitting area here, very comfortable. Um, as well as, uh, please follow me the side. This is the comfortable bed they have. And uh, this side is the bathroom. So you have your bathtub here, you have your robes here, and uh, here is the shower. Here is the shower. Good day, my name is Lindbury Snyman. Um, I'm a manager at the Olive Exclusive. Um, we have seven rooms of seven suites, like they would call it, of which four is premium suites, which have their own little splash pool, swimming pool, and three is junior suites. We also have a communal swimming pool. We have a restaurant, we have we cater for um, small weddings up to about 40 people maximum. So if you want to have something small, um, which is more intimate, then you can call us. Yeah, um, it's very nice here. Um, we are situated in Promenade and Road 22. Um, and if you watch this movie and you like the video, you can give us a call. I uh, well, that was it for the Olive Exclusive. Up next under destinations, we have a look at the Nakambale Museum, which is situated all the way up north in the Ondangwa district. The Nakambale Museum is situated in the former Finnish missionary station Olukonda, close to the town Ondangwa in the north of Namibia. The museum was named after the Finnish missionary Marti Rautinen, whose nickname was Nakambale. The Nakambale Museum is situated in the former missionary house and mainly displays items from the Finnish missionary state station, my apologies, but also some artifacts of the Ovambo culture. Among other things, the collection includes household items, instruments and furniture of the missionaries. Furthermore, the museum hosts a complete homestead of the Ndonga, one of the language groups of the Ovambo culture, as well as a guided tour can be booked and some cultural performances can be arranged as well. But these must be booked well in advance. Let's have a look at that video. Welcome to another episode of Tourismus. Today we are filming from the beautiful Nakambale Museum and Lodge situated in Olukonda, which is in the Oshikoto region. Uh, my name is Magdalena Kanante Itula. I'm working at Nakambale as a supervisor. Uh, yeah, we are going to tell you more about our place. Uh, this place is a uh, let me say it's a Nakambale Museum and Lodge. Yeah, I say it's, there's a museum, there's a lodge. Uh, first of all, I would like to just to tell you about our place. Our place is a historical site. It's also, there's also open air museum. Uh, Nakambale Museum is located in Olukonda village that uh, we call uh, it was a first Finnish mission here in Ovamboland. This place is founded by some of the first Finnish missionaries, those who came here in Namibia in 1870. And then in 1856, Hugo Han, who was the leader of the German missionaries, he descended to this Ovamboland. And when he came in Ovamboland, he came straight in Ondonga. 
uh, in the kingdom where we are now. And he met with the king, Shikongo Shakaluru, who was the king of Wandonga at that time. And he told the king everything that the German missionaries are doing to the south, to Shimbingwe, because the, uh, Shimbingwe is the herald land. That they are teaching over herald people how to read and how to write. They are teaching them also about God. That's why uh, Shikongo Shakaru was happy and he wanted also the missionaries to come here in Novamberland. Uh, but at that time, the German missionaries, they were few. They were not enough to spread the whole Namibia. But luckily, Hugo Han, he hid that uh, Finnish mission school to Finland. That's why he just wrote a letter and sent to Finland. And then in, 18, in 1868, uh, the Finnish mission society, they are descended to send 10 Finnish missionaries to come to work in Hinovamberland. And then they are alive in Africa, 1868. And then when Hugo heard that the Finnish missionaries are alive in Oshimbingwe, they just took the ox wagon to pick them up from Oshimbingwe. I mean, from they are alive in Vals Bay. Mm -hmm. And then they took the ox wagon to pick them up from Vals Bay to Oshimbingwe. Mm -hmm. Because that time there was no car. They just used ox wagon. And then the aim to take them first there, just to teach them Oshi Herero language. Because Oshi Herero and Oshi Vambo is similar, it's a battle language. So that when they are coming here in Novamberland, they can communicate with the king, they can also communicate with the uh, local people here in Novamberland. Well, that brings us to the end of Destinations, where we had a look at the Olive Exclusive, as well as the Nakambale Museum, which is all the way up north in the Ondangwa district. But for now, it's time for us to head over to To The Point. Get real value for your money at WB. Grab 750 gram Ellis Brown Creamer for $41.99. Wake up to 250 gram Ricoffee for just $39.99. Get 2 kilogram Real Good Mixed Chicken for $86.99. Stock up with 500 gram Bacomo Corn Flakes for $32.99. And grab 1 litre Clover New Mel for just $17.99. Now that's real value at WB. We care. Welcome back. It's of course time for To The Point and in today's point we discuss hunting. Hunting plays a huge role, a huge part in the total value chain of the tourism segment which employs around 100,000 people who are directly dependent on the tourism industry. Namibia Professional Hunting Association, NAPA, President Axel Kramer talks about the proceedings in the United Kingdom Parliament to ban wildlife trophies and the importance of the industry in an interview with NMH journalist Ilani Smith. Let's have a look at that video as well. Yes, good morning. My name is Axel Kramer. I'm the president of the Namibia Professional Hunting Association or short name to NAFA. Good day, Axel. Um, I just want to um, uh, you to elaborate a bit about um, the current situation in the UK with them um, having a discussion um, to have uh, a bill brought in to ban trophy hunting um, or trophies um, from Namibia and other African countries. Yes, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, the legislation has, was passed um, in the lower house of the um, UK Parliament. Um, the legislation involves around that foreign um, hunters or trophy hunters, as we know them, um, are, will then not be allowed to bring back their trophies back to the UK as been used in the past. That legislation still needs to be passed um, at the House of Lords, that's the upper house. But um, we think that it will, it will be passed and um, in, in essence they will not stop hunting but um, hunt, foreign hunters will then not be allowed to bring back their trophies. The, the trophy is the skull, the horn, the skins or any, anything around that. Um, how will this impact on Namibia? The impact on Namibia, obviously it will have a negative impact. Um, the UK is not a key market for Namibia, but it will have an impact on Namibia and then also on Africa as a, as a whole. 
our key markets, um, it's still the um, Europe in, in terms of the Germany, um, Austria and Switzerland, the, uh, the German bloc as we call it, and which is then followed by the US. However, any legislation like that has a um, spillover effect to other European countries and um, they might follow suit and that's all. Therefore, we believe it is a very um, bad um, situation for, for, for Africa or Southern Africa once that legislation has been passed. Um, we have seen that um, our community members and non-governmental organizations, they have petitioned the UK government not to implement that bill. Was there any feedback or anything from... Um, that uh, petition that uh, uh, was brought to the UK? Yes, I think our, the, obviously hunting, as trophy hunting in, in, in Namibia and in Africa where it has been practiced for many, many years has a huge advantages for the local communities in, uh, not only in terms of the meat uh, distribution but also the financial benefit they are getting from, from, from foreign hunters coming to our country. So they have a keen or vested interest in um, in, 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 the, in the hunting um, segment. So, unfortunately, their voices, they raised their voices, um, but those voices and arguments were not heard or actually just discarded. And um, good, good arguments by, and point, and, and, uh, which were led in, and discussed um, by um, Oxford University scientists and, and, and doctorates like Dillis Rowe from the IUCN and Amy Dickman. Well, if they're actually not non-hunters, but they see the benefit which hunting has in communities, those good arguments were just uh, wiped off the table, unfortunately, and um, um, they, they, they didn't have any impact um, as we thought um, it should have had. Um, from NAFA's side, um, what, um, in, what intervention, was there anything from NAFA's side? Um, was the discussions maybe with the minister on this issue? Yes, that um, the, the, the passing of the bill didn't come as a surprise to us. Obviously, it's already started a few, a few years back, and um, since it was, I think, started I think two or three years ago, they already um, the, they raised their concerns that, that um, legislation might be imposed. We wrote various letters and consulted with our ministry how to counter, counter those arguments or a proposed bill. We wrote um, good letters and showed them how we, um, what benefits um, conservation hunting, as we call it, Namibia has in our local communities, and also on our, on our, not just on local communities, but also as the economy as a whole. Um, but unfortunately, um, we, we will not be able to to, to to succeed in terms of good um, arguments which were just, um, just wiped off the table. Unfortunately, and um, we, we, um, the, op we, um, the opposition was, um, was, was good, but we, we, we could not counter that um, with the um, animal rights organizations who are driving an emotionally driven agenda and you can't really fight um, against that. And um, that's, that's very, very, very sad for us in the hunting sector. And um, going forward, we actually need to, to try to change our, um, yeah, our, our approach and maybe our strategy, how to counter those future arguments. Um, currently, what is the contribution of hunting to our economy? Hunting plays a part in the total value chain of the tourism segment. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the total tourism sector in Namibia employs over 100,000 people, which are directly um, um, dependent on the or in, 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 the, in, the, in, this, in this segment. Mm -hmm. Just for instance sake, um, I think two or three years ago, a leading research company in Namibia found that um, foreign hunters coming to Namibia um, make up between three to five percent of the total tourism arrivals but they leave up to a quarter of the entire revenue. So we are, we are dealing with a low impact um, client, but a high value uh, tourist um, client. So it's a very, very valuable um, um, tourist to, 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 um, to, to welcome into Namibia, um, also from a foreign exchange perspective and 
from a total value chain, um, the hunting sector is, is, is leaving behind if compared to other to the total other tourism segment like non-consumptive uses, which has a much higher footprint on the on the wildlife and um, on the nature if compared to um, hunting, which has a very low impact on our um, environment. Do we know how much um, uh, how many people is employed through hunting? It's difficult because um, I can just give you an example. Um, we we have almost um, 600 um, registered hunting farms in our country, and you have um, farms which have purely are purely hunting farms. But then you have many farms which have a, a which have cattle ranch activities together with hunting. So you have them um, employing um, cattle herders or farm employees, and they're doing also hunting work. But it's very difficult to to to, to ascertain that number. But um, we are working on a economic research in order to, to find out the exact um, impact um, trophy hunting or conservation hunting, as we call it, has on our economy, also on the, on the, on the private side. Um, there's a lot of data being available on conservancies and mm -hmm. communities, but not so much on, on private land. So it's very difficult to tell, but um, hunting plays it's a key. It's a, it's a big chain in the total uh, tourism um, 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 activity. Well, that brings us to the end of our edition of Tourismus Namibia for this week. I'm Prishni Tanapo. I hope you guys enjoyed the show where we discussed topics um, as well as destinations where we had a look at the Nakambali Museum, not forgetting the Olive Exclusive, as well as our To The Point segment where we discuss a little bit about hunting and hunting trophies. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the show and that you stick around for next week. Enjoy your weekend. <music>